feel so grateful and honored to be chatting with you today. I absolutely loved this movie. Congratulations. Thank you. You play Marie Antoinette, the infamous historical figure, um, but you brought such a nuanced complexity to her character. Um, can you please talk to me about finding the delicate balance between her charm and her entitlement? Oh my God, that's a great question. Um, I think they are so intertwined. You know, I think when I first approached this role, I felt like she'd been, I I, th I had such a clear idea of her as this kind of spoiled girl woman. Um, and, and I realized, you know, she's been villainized throughout history in a way that seems really specifically reserved for women. I think had she been villainized um, for what she does in this film, it would have been so much more legitimate and we would have understood that. But the things that she has been kind of derided for, um, I think I, I made less and less sense to me the more I learned about her. So I, I think in terms of your question, I think understanding how young she was when she ent entered the French court, when she was, she was 14, when she married Louis, and she always had this rebellious streak about her of wanting to reject the rules and kind of take up space and get into the thick of everything. And I think when you're that sheltered, when you're a woman taught that um, your actions don't have consequences, you know, you're a breeder and that's it. Mm -hmm. Of course, then you start to, um, I don't know, you, you can be all of those things that she was of, of um, I'm trying to think how to articulate it. Of of course, she then, I think, became very sheltered and was able to just continue being this kind of girl woman and continue feeling so young. So I think at the beginning of the film, I really tried to capture that, that kind of fizziness of youth and the kind of um, myopic nature you have when the world is all yours and reality is is so. Yeah, absolutely. That was so beautifully said. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, your performance was so heartbreaking at the end because of kind of everything you're saying when she essentially puts her um, her privilege and her position above all else, really out of fear, I think, which is why it's so complex and why we kind of, my heart broke in that moment when she makes that decision. Um, how does the film kind of explore the fear of change and the power of curiosity, which was prevalent back then and is just still as relevant today? Hey. Absolutely. And I think that was a thing that struck me when I read that final monologue and that final scene between them. It was so familiar, that rhetoric of dialogue um, and frighteningly so. So I really wanted to lean into that as the kind of understanding and the motivation for that scene. And I, and I agree. And I'm, I'm so grateful to hear that 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 resonates that your heart does kind of break for that person making for the fact that she makes those decisions because it doesn't have to be that way. That's all she is able to see and all she chooses to see. And I think she starts to, and for her specifically, it was life and death, but I wanted to relate it more to a contemporary context where I think she feels like a cornered rat and she's operating totally out of fear and self-serving pragmatism where she decides to be myopic. She decides to only um, kind of clutch to the things that provide safety. And that ends up being things that I think she previously used to, would have turned her nose up at and reject. They were the very things that she was kind of cynical of. And then those are the things that then she clutches to as she fears change and what change means for her. And again, I think we realize how kind of self-serving parts of that relationship was when she's able to sever it in the way that she is and become completely blinded by what she thinks that she needs to see and do. Oh, um, I got so many words, but I'm just saying. No, it's so true. I mean, it's, yeah, and, and just the way that you deliver that monologue. I mean, it's like you can even see the um, the gears turning and you're it's almost like what you're saying and what you're feeling and what you the, the look in your eyes is all um, layered with like with doubt with but also with certainty and it's just um, it was beautiful um, let's talk about the costumes for a second because yeah, let's keep the light <laughs> 
because they're so they are incredible. Um, especially, I mean, Marie Antoinette, she was known for her sort of elaborate fashion. Um, but my question for you, though, is how did both kind of the decadence, but also the restrictive nature of the costumes also help you get into that character of that dichotomy, you know, that duality? Yeah. Totally. Totally. I think it was it was really informative of how I found the character in the first place and also how I stepped into her every day when that ritual of departing yourself and becoming someone else is that physical and that tangible. I think it's so helpful. Um, and you have to relearn with that combination of corsetry and this new spatial awareness. You have to relearn how to hold yourself and how to project your voice because you're so restrained. Um and knowing that she was a woman who was definitely in the house of more is more is more, it made <laughs> the costume process uh, really fun and extreme. And I think it provided such an exciting opportunity as well to do something contrasting with the acting. So like in those final scenes where she is full kind of villain, full venom, that the kind of flush pink colors and the delicacy or the femininity of that um, I think allowed me to go even further and more extreme with those much kind of darker actions and darker feelings. Um, well last but not least um, and in honor of art and love um, when did you first fall in love with the art of storytelling? Storytelling. Um, I think I mean, I'm sure it. I started to fall in love earlier, but but my first day on set on Miss Potter when I was 12, uh, to be able to see it in that kind of context, in that scale, with that many people putting everything into telling this story, putting everything into their craft in so many different outlets was so impactful for a young, young person to see and to have a, a place in that um, was just the most magical introduction to this industry and that story and the impact of Beatrix Potter being my introduction to this industry just kind of ignited this idea that it can be everything you want it to be of play and exploration but also have impact with an audience and meaning and purpose and so that kind of it's wild to have that moment that you can point to as a kid and just know that that's when my life changed. Lovely I mean I always say the best stories um, create um, empathy and educate uh, I think Right. I mean, and that's what that movie did back then. And that's what this lovely movie will do as well. So thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for those questions. Thank you.